All right, well, good morning. Uh, my name is John Dombrowski, and, I'm, and uh, I'm here to talk to you about uh, addictions and ways of managing addictions. So kind of tell me how you came to me today. Please, Mom, why don't you start us off? Um, after our son acquired his addiction through Children's Hospital from a spine surgery, uh, we were that family that was just battling it, the roller coaster ride, yeah. up and down, up and down. Um, I knew that we were losing too many patients a day, mm -hmm. and that there had to be something else because it wasn't willpower that was going to save them. Right. They were they're dying. And you've been dealing with this since he was age of fifteen, and now you know you're twenty five, I think, right now. So it's yeah. been a ten year roller coaster, both for yourself as well as your your family, your mom, right? Yeah. And so you, I know you do some work in terms of athletes in uh, uh, in Ohio, and you had done some research about naltrexone. Right. I right. was Googling and searching, you know, desperately looking for anything that would save his life. Right. Um, and get this hell to stop. And what did you find about naltrexone? What did you find out about this? Well, I, I realized there was this implant that right. patients were receiving and um, that it was working. And I know that because I went into the chat rooms of the addicts and actually talked to them. I wasn't hearing it from doctors. I was hearing it from the patients, the addicts. And I asked them questions about it. And then I started just doing my homework and research and just kept at it. I wanted to kind of watch and see what side effects were going to be sure. um, and get him to a place where I could get him to agree to it. Right. That's part of the battle too. Yeah. So tell me about from your perspective the whole idea of this implant and you know do, would you, do you think at, this is helpful? At, do you think at it's... first at first I wouldn't do the or I wouldn't do the Vivitrol. I wanted the implant because I heard you could drink and I was still still a drinker. Um, yeah. But then you know once once I had had enough of my addiction you know I finally agreed you know as soon as we figure out where to go, I'll go. And you know, and so you guys are coming from Columbus, Ohio. Moringa. Well, we, we came from a little town called West Jefferson. Okay. That was really hit hard by the opiate ah, okay. um, epidemic. We lost half our football team from Jordan's Whoa. high school year. Uh, convicted felons. And they're, these are kids that are going to struggle the rest of their lives. How about that? I never knew that. Wow. I was ranked number one in the nation for wow. drug overdoses. And so you found me through the internet then? Yes. Okay. And so now I'm going to just jump right in and just ask you, so we just finished your implant. Yep. How's it, how, how, how did the, if, you, if someone is watching this as a potential patient and they're going to think of an implant and oh my God, surgery and all that sort of stuff, what would you tell them? Well, I got a very low pain tolerance and I'd say it was only a three or a four. So it was the worst part. And the worst part was the shots in the beginning, I think. So the shots in the beginning, you mean the local anesthesia? The, yeah. Okay, and that was like a... A burning kind yeah, of sensation. Yeah, like a bee sting. So after that, it was you know pretty pain free. So. And after that, would how long did that take? Would you say? I mean, we're here in the doctor's office. So how long did it take you? Twenty minutes from the time I got my original you know numbing shots to the time we were finished. I would say about twenty twenty five minutes when we was done. So we can go tour Washington D.C. now and get these <laughs> legislators to pass this, right? That would be <laughs> awesome. So again, just in closing, if someone who is a patient or a parent is suffering with addiction, whether it's alcohol or opiates, and obviously, what would you kind of tell them to do? You know, don't don't give up. If they're still alive, keep fighting. You know, don't be afraid to turn those stones. No one's looked under because. And would would this implant be one of those stones? I'm assuming, or what would you think? From everything that I've read, yes. I mean, some patients are describing it as a miracle, um, and you know, we're willing to do anything to keep from going and visiting a headstone. Sure. So. Yeah. Well, thank you. Go ahead. Please, after you. Uh, I, a lot of addicts, you know, can't do it on their own. Most of them can't. I think this is the first step, you know, to, you know, fixing it, turning it all around. So. And I've heard of that. Like, in other words, there are some people that are of the belief that you have to just do it by willpower. Willpower is not enough. That's why they're dying. Right. And then, so this is where you sort of get a supplement, you know, yeah. to help you as, as you this, change your life this around. This is somewhere other than willpower and religion that will, you know, hopefully turn it around. Sure, so. sure. Well, thank you very much for sharing your story.